All right, all right, all right. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy almost February at the time of this recording. I can't believe it. <laughs> the first 31 days of January are almost complete in 2023. And for a lot of you guys, you've been following me. I've been sharing a ton this month about limiting beliefs, uh, addictive behaviors, and how do we get to the root cause of these things. And I, I got inspired by one of my friends, our guest today, Bill Whitmire, and he and I are going to be talking about how to get to the root cause of addiction and, and how can we provide hope. Um, I know there's a lot of people who go sober in January. There's a lot of people who set New Year's resolutions and want to have better health and better finances. And it's usually by February 1st that 80% of the people have been like, you know what, this is too hard. I can't do it. Maybe next year. So I thought that the timing was very divine to have a conversation with someone who's really lived this journey, um, even like way more than I have. Um, Bill, I'm so excited to have you got you here today. And I want to invite anybody that's tuning in to if you see value, if you, especially if you know someone who's struggling with addictive behaviors addiction, um, please hit the share button. As I always like to say, sharing is caring. And if you're tuning in live, um, comment below. Already got our first comment. Hello from Arkansas. If you're tuning in, you can say hashtag live, city and state, country. And then of course, if you're on the replay, hashtag replay. Um, I think this is going to be a really invaluable conversation. So Bill, I know, gosh, I can't remember if it's been four years. Um, I think it's been since 2018, if I'm not mistaken, that I met Bill for the first time. Um, we became friends, business partners, and we also discovered we had this passion for health and helping people um, work through the challenges of life. And so you, mm -hmm. like in March, is going to be your 38th year in recovery, Bill. So I'd love for you to share your journey, your recovery story, um, and share with us, you know, a little bit about the all of it, whatever you share in our little bit of time together. Sure. Well, well thanks, Lois. It's it's uh, great being here and great seeing you. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's back in 2018 that we first met and and had have had a lot of adventures together. So <laughs> it's great. Uh, great having you in my life. You're, you're a great person and an inspiration to me. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so I, my journey, you know, to me, my journey with addictive behaviors really started before my, my first addiction, if you will, was with alcohol. I'll just be very transparent here. Um, and I'm transparent because I know that other people have been transparent with me over the years. And that's what helped me get into recovery was people being transparent with their stories. Um, but really, I mean, with me, it, it, it started before I ever picked up, picked up any kind of substance. I didn't feel good about myself. I had a low self-esteem and when I was in school, I never really felt like I was a part of anything. And when I picked up, um, alcohol for me, that was my first addiction, if you will. Um, I felt like I was whole. I felt like whatever was going on inside of me, I couldn't tell you at the time, I can tell you now what was going on, but, but I just felt like I had this, um, hole in my heart, if you will. And that, and alcohol filled it, filled it up. And, um, the problem with it was to fill that hole. I call it the hole in my soul to fill that hole in my soul. It took more and more of the alcohol to fill it up. And then I started paying consequences because of my addiction. Um, and for me, the, the uh, you know, we talk about like changing behaviors and getting to the root cause of changing those behaviors. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that I like to do in my life, like fitness goals and things like this. And I, I fall short of some of those things. And I kind of, you know, um, I call it the 50 yard dash syndrome. I'll kind of get halfway there and then I'll kind of stop. <laughs> Um, but, but what I've learned over the years is when I start paying severe consequences because of my behavior, that's when I start getting really motivated to change. And that's what happened with, with, uh, uh, with, with my addiction to substances As I started paying some severe consequences physically and mentally. And that's when I started really seeking some recovery. 
Um, and there was uh, a number of things that also happened. I'll, I'll just call it um, for me in the spiritual realm, if you will, that also happened as well. And um, some certain, certain people were put in my life, the universe, but certain people in my life. And that had a, a, a major impact on me energy wise, if you will. And so that really led me into recovery. Um, and I've stayed on that path o- over the years. It's been hard. It's been a rocky road. Some of us call it trudging the road. Um, but it's, it's been so worth it. I, I can tell you right now um, that I wouldn't be here today. Um, I started my use, if you will, when I was 15 and I stopped and I got into recovery when I was 19. I can tell you people say, oh, you're so smart because you sobered up when you were 19. I can tell you I am not that smart. <laughs> uh, that has nothing to do with it. I, I wouldn't be a lot. We wouldn't be having this conversation today. I would be dead. I'm, I'm serious. Um, so I'm just really grateful for the folks that showed me the way. Um, and something else I would like to bring to it before I kind of wind it up on my little story here is, you know, over the years I have, you know, picked up other addictions because I do have this, some people call it the addictive personality or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I had, um, to be transparent over the last five years, I had a real problem with the gambling addiction. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you that for, for me, the gambling addiction was much harder. I had more relapses with the gambling addiction than I did with alcohol. Alcohol, it was like, I'm done. It, it was like, like that. But with the gambling addiction, I really struggled. Uh, mm-hmm. And again, it was through all of a sudden I had some people put in my life and I had some, mm-hmm. some energy shifts in my life and some spiritual experiences, if you will, that really have helped me with my uh, gambling recovery. So it's been three years now that I've been in and in, in abstinent from gambling, which again has kind of put me on a whole different path as well in recovery. So I can now I can empathize, if you will, um, with folks that do struggle with alcohol recovery that relapse a lot and also have other addictions that relapse but there's there's always hope and that's what i tell people is hey you may you may be you may have had a relapse there's hope you know come back you know um you know let, let's get back on this path get back on this spiritual path because there's there's always hope don't give up hope so um mm. yeah that's kind of a little bit about me and my story so and um and here i am <laughs> Yeah, and I remember when you told me about when you were struggling with gambling, it was not too long after we met and I was just so humbled. You were so humble and and open in, in, in sharing that. And I find that when I was struggling with my own binge drinking for years, you know, it was really uh, something that I, I kind of like hid from and, and keeping in mind being in networking and being in all of these social activities, right? Um, there was a lot of it, almost like expectation <laughs> that that would happen because a lot of people were doing it or embodying that. And I didn't realize, like you were saying, now you know um, what was causing you to, to pick up alcohol, um, but you don't necessarily know that because it's so, so unconscious, and then when you start to realize, like I did, oh my gosh, I think, I think I have a problem. I didn't want to tell anybody because there was so much shame. Alcoholism ran in my family. I've lost lots of family and friends to that. So what do you say to people like myself in that situation? And when you meet someone, how can you overcome that so that you then say, hey, I think I do need help? Yeah. So, so it, it, yeah, there is, there, there definitely is a, a lot, can be a lot of feeling of a lot of shame and guilt, if you will, to those, to, to that kind of situation. And really what, what I like to think about is when I was in early recovery, I, I listened to a lot of tapes. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not like a big reader of books, if you will, but I love the, at, at that time, I'm dating myself now, the book's on tape. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in early recovery, um, I, I had a job, uh, I had a, a delivery job 
I, I was a delivery driver and, and um, I would listen to these tapes all day long because I was driving eight hours a day. But there was a guy named John Bradshaw who mm-hmm. was uh, at that time in the, oh my goodness, the mid 80s, I guess. Um, he had, he uh, had brought in kind of this new movement in recovery where you start looking at childhood issues, if you will, or family issues and how what goes on in the family and goes on in dysfunctional families directly relates to addictive behavior and what happens to us. And he, one of the things he talked about is, hey, the the alcoholic or the addictive person is the person in the family raising their hand saying, screaming, you know, something is wrong. This is not right. And so really the, the alcoholic or the um, addict, whatever addiction it may be, is is the family messenger. They're the messenger that's saying something's not right here. And so when the addict um, uh, gets in recovery, becomes a person in recovery, it can actually heal the entire family. So really, the, the you know, we talk about being change agents, um, you know, the 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 person you know, in recovery can be a change agent for the entire family system, really. Of course, now the, the other family members have to get on board, right? <laughs> but if, if the family gets on board, it can, like, it can be transformational, mm-hmm. a, a huge transformation for the whole family. And so, so that's, um, that, that can be really helpful for people um, because, yeah, we do. We do carry a lot of shame and guilt, especially depending on what happens in their families. I mean, I can remember me, uh, the way I, some of the things that happened to me, I won't get into all the, the stories, if you will, but some of the things I did, I had a lot of shame over the things that I did. And mm-hmm. obviously, you know, you're, how do I say this? You're letting people down, you're disappointing people. And then obviously people say things that maybe they don't mean, but they get upset with you. And so it leads us to a whole mess that has to be cleaned up. <laughs> yeah. And I would say too, a lot of that is self judgment. Like I think the inner critic comes with a lot of, of judgment and, and, and self loathing. And it becomes almost a, a cycle of uh, self fulfilling prophecy of, Oh, well, I screwed up. I'm never going to change. So then you just keep going down that path. And it, I think that's actually the the main reason New Year's resolutions don't work. Also, I'm, I'm trying to also make this, um, you know, everyday life, because addictive behaviors is not just substances, not just gambling. It can be people pleasing, it could be not knowing how to say no, um, allowing people to just kind of like invade your space and not allowing yourself to have healthy boundaries that can also be, and usually they're, they're trauma responses or they go back to what you said. And I'd like to transition to the root causes and what you learned from Bradshaw and the dysfunctional family thing is, you know, if, if you grew up with that, and it's a part of a trauma response or a deeply embedded thing inside your cells, your DNA. Some people talk about epigenetics. It's ancestral, right? It can run in the family. Well, how do you how do you get to the root cause with that, with, again, all of the shame and all of the uncertainty on top of that? So maybe that's kind of a big question. We could talk for hours on that. But what helped you really get to your root cause? Because you said when you were younger, you felt like you didn't belong or, or you felt like an outsider or you felt different. And the alcohol filled a hole for you, which again, we could do with people pleasing, saying yes to people gives you an adrenaline rush. All of those kinds of things I think have have similar root causes. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, I to- I totally agree with that. And yeah, with the people pleasing or not being able to say no, or, you know, kind of developing patterns and getting into what I would call uh, unhealthy relationships. That can be a whole pattern, if you will. So we get into all these unhealthy patterns. Um, and yeah, and that's, that's absolutely what happen- comes out of dysfunctional families. Um, and I know for me in my own journey, one, one, of, the, one, one of the things I did was... Um, uh, John Bradshaw had a, a, a center. Uh, I think it was called the John Bradshaw Centers for Recovery or something. Anyway, it's in, it was in Houston. And so I went to a 
a, a workshop there to spend some time wor working on myself, if you will, and to take some time for me. And so I did a whole workshop on this inner work, uh, on this inner healing. Bradshaw calls calls it getting called it inner getting in touch with your inner child. So it was called inner inner child work. I think it still is. I may be wrong on that, but uh, but basically it's delving into your into your own history and what happened to you and how um, because you're basically you really didn't um, because your development because my development I'll speak I'll use I statements here my development was impacted by the dysfunctional family I grew up in so I didn't have proper development if you will oh, so because of because of that you know here I was at that time how old was I, I must have been like 23 24 if you will so I was yeah so I was five years into recovery and whatever path you're on you know substances no substances if you're on a path of health and wellness you're gonna run into like what I call these brick walls right you know these block these blocks so I had run into this block and that motivated me to go to workshop um so but in in delving with this fan and delving into this family history, uh, I realized that the, the little kid in me never got taken care of. So here I was in a 20, mm -hmm. what, 24 year old body, but really I was, how do, but really I was more like a teenager. I was like that 13, 14, 15 year old kid that never got taken care of. I was that, you know, 12 year old kid that got picked on in school that, that wouldn't um, defend himself, if you will. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I still had all these feelings of shame from, I, you know, the things that happened to me when I was a little kid and I was, and I, and those feelings were like really intense. I mean, I learned how to hide them cause I was an adult, but, and, mm -hmm. and they could get triggered, you know, something could happen at work. Maybe I would get bullied at work. A lot of people get bullied and harassed at work mm -hmm. and they go into these shame attacks. And I would literally go into a shame attack at work cause I got bullied. I didn't stand up for myself. And I go into this whole thing. <laughs> so um, it was, yeah, it was. So the workshop itself was very painful, at, actually, because it brought up a whole lot of feelings for me. Uh, and what was great was there was Bradshaw had a number of counsel, counselors there, really mm -hmm. not therapists, but like people to support you, if you will, Um it really it wasn't therapy it was facilitating right yeah. it was um to me the answers are within us so it was facilitating ways to get mm -hmm. to those answers mm -hmm. um and as those discover as i made those discoveries along with you know the people i was with in these groups it was group work so we like fed up of each other yeah. uh, we would make these discoveries and we would support each other and then the facilitators uh, if we needed extra support would come over and support and things like this. Um, so it made a huge impact on me. That was years ago. And I still use those tools, you know, that I learned, learned back then. Um, so yeah, I can, I can tell when my little kid is hurting, you know, and needs to take care of themselves, you know, maybe, maybe we need to go on a walk or maybe we need to spend some time with, um, you know, I love animals. So maybe I need to spend mm -hmm. some time with my animals and take them for a walk, or maybe I need to go climb a mountain or, you know, I could go on and on and on, but, um, yes. <laughs> yeah. You found the way I'm just going to mirror back what I heard yeah. because this is so important. Um, the answers do all lie within us. I believe that we all have inner child wounds. And I even say ancestral wounds, which I'll talk about in a second that are just, they're in your blood, they're in your DNA. And if you don't have the support and emotional intelligence and, and a facilitator who can help you be able to develop that skill, because if you're triggered by something, that was my big thing. If I was triggered by anxiety, then yes, alcohol was such a, you know, immediate solution, a dopamine hit, whatever to kind of bring my body back to equilibrium. But you can do that, like you said, going for walks in nature. You can do that through breath work. I found Kundalini yoga um, was a huge help for me, acupuncture, different kind of um, Eastern philosophies and medicines. So it's, it's a matter of 
really understanding how to hold yourself, right? To hold your inner child and to be able to nourish and nurture and give, give that little, little child what it, what it did not get when we were in that maybe dysfunctional situation. So good. Yeah. Yeah. I want to quickly acknowledge, I know we're already 20 minutes in. I want to acknowledge Sean Wait. We have a, a really good crowd today tuning in on the live. And if you see value, guys, please do hit the share button. Um, this is a good time, too, if you're open to it. We won't take very many questions, but I do like to uh, reward those who show up on the live. If you feel like asking a question or two, um, feel free. I, I would like to turn kind of like what I was sharing with you, Bill, with my own journey, I noticed I, I wanted to break the cycle. I wanted to break the generational or ancestral curse. Oh, this runs in the family. And you said that so beautifully earlier too, is we're here to raise our hand and say, hey, enough is enough. And I know you've done a lot of different types of, um, uh, we'll call them, ways of working with um and i know you had said there was a, a place in arizona that had like a what did they have like a 98 percent or a really really high success rate with helping people with addiction and recovery and it, it seemed like they had a really holistic approach that was really really profound to help people as well so I, i'd like to kind of transition into you know how do you get to the root causes what are all the options and, and what do you recommend for people looking into that may be listening today? Yeah, so it, it to me, it's really a, a, the, it's a, it's a, it's a mind, body, spirit thing. So we really need to take care of all three. Mm -hmm. um, another way to think of it, uh, when I first got into recovery is we called it work, love and play from the standpoint of, you know, all of those things need to be balanced, whatever we do for work, whatever we do for relationships, and then our recreation or how we, how we, you know, um, um, uh, enjoy ourselves, whatever that might be, whether it's hiking or playing sports, whatever. Um, so if those things are out of balance, um, then we're not going to be in balance as, as humans. Um, so, and I know for me, there's different, there's different ways to do that. So, um, I have, I've over the years uh, off and on for me personally, I've done yoga. Yoga has been great for me because especially I had learned in the beginning, I'd always been encouraged to do meditation and I really struggled with it, but with the yoga, I found it much more structured and I could actually get in get into the meditation and actually literally sit still for, for more than two minutes. <laughs> when, I, when I first started meditating, I, I, I just couldn't do it. I had too much going on. Hmm. Um, but the yoga really helped tame the, tame what was going on in my, in my, in my brain. So that helped as well. And obviously the physical movement too. So the physical movement, uh, coupled with the meditation and the yoga. There's other practices as well, of course, but that's what I use. Um, and then taking care of ourselves, you know, taking care of our bodies. So uh, a few years ago, it must have been about four years ago, I made a total transfer, tra transformation in what I eat. So uh, diet has a huge uh, part, uh, in my opinion, in, in our recovery. So well, what we eat can literally change how we feel. Uh, so for me, and you know, everybody's different, everybody's got their own way, but I went and saw a naturopathic doctor and she put uh, me on this total detox for, it was like 10 days. We did, and the first couple of days were really rough. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. They were really rough, but we got through it. And, but then after that, I got used to it. So the 10 day detox thing. And then I went on this whole, different way of eating so every my my diet is totally gluten-free now i don't really do the i never really did dairy but it's very gluten-free if you will uh which has really changed my life i don't have um some of the problems that i had before they just don't exist it's like a whole new thing for my for my body so for me that was critical 
And, um, and then the last part, of course, like the, like the recreation or what we do for fun, we have to do things. In my opinion, we need to do things for fun because it changes how we are. When I, when I, um, go out and do things for fun, um, to me, different things are fun, but, uh, it like gives me a reset. It gives my brain a reset. So I will, I might have this problem that I just cannot figure out something really a task that's really difficult for me. And I'll just step away and go have a little bit of fun, spend some time with my grandkids or whatever it might be. And then I'll come back to us and then it clicks for me. So, but these are all the tools um, that, that can really help us and it, and it helps us with our recovery. So. I love that. And you, you reminded me of something too. And I, I hope this, um, well, there's two things I want to expound upon what you said. I, I have uh, all my clients working through mind, body, spirit, daily, take five, like be intentional about just five minutes for your mental health, five minutes for your physical and five minutes for your spiritual. You know, if you don't know where to start, that's where you start, because I feel like a lot of times in our society, Bill, you know, you got to work hard, you got to pay the bills, you got to do all, do all of these things. And so oftentimes people don't put their oxygen mask on first. Mm-hmm. And, and that is where I fell into that as I had business goals, I had financial goals, I was surrounded by people who had really, really big business and financial goals. And kind of, I, I, even though I coached probably 10,000 people on health and fitness and mind, body, spirit stuff, even I got caught up in that environment, right, of success and doing. And before you know it, I wasn't working out. I I wasn't working with my spiritual health. I said, you know, some a day, some a day when I have X amount of dollars in the bank, I'll get to that. So I just want to reiterate that to people that some a day may not come, <laughs> right? Uh, you got to take care of yourself. And so I'm so glad that you brought up the mind, body, spirit piece as well. And if you guys can be intentional with that, it could really, really start. It's, it's a slow journey, right, Bill? Even you said uh, with your whole 38 years, you know, it's you're going to kind of go two steps forward and maybe take a step or two back. And it's that hope that keeps you going and remembering that you're not going to master this mind, body, spirit um, journey overnight, which again, brings me back to one more thing that I want to share. And then I'd love your thoughts to expound upon what I'm sharing is when I was recognizing that I had uh, turned into a, a binge drinking workaholic who was also having those tendencies of people pleasing. What I didn't know then that I know now is that I was trying to get the alcohol, the, the experiences, the, the working too much, all of that too muchness was actually trying to get my attention. It was trying to help me, even though I wasn't at first be curious, like, why am I doing this? So I was on autopilot and I find that a lot of people with addictive behaviors, emotional eating, um, Netflix. I mean, there's, there's a huge list of things that people use to numb out and and just kind of check out of of life is if you're having those things happen get curious and with curious compassion ask yourself what is this what is this teaching me what am i learning from this and what i learned which was really shocking was that i didn't i didn't love myself i didn't have self compassion i was abandoning myself with the people pleasing the drinking and the working too much so did you have like a similar realization like that as well? Yeah, yeah, I, I, de- I definitely did. So, um, you know, with 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 my with my behaviors, uh, my addictions, and and whether it be not necessarily alcohol with with work, um, I, I've spent a lot. I've spent a lot of time in my recovery, um, uh, ch- chasing the dollar, if you will, or chasing success or being an overachiever. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, so, so at some point it, it's almost like an automatic pilot thing or with me, it has been, or with, this is, um, this is like, 
you know, to be part of society, um, I need to be success driven and I need to make a certain amount of money. And if I don't make a certain amount of money, what's wrong with me? Um, or if I see, you know, other people around me, like, you know, my, my circle, if you will, everyone being successful, but I'm not quite there, you know, comparing my, how do I, so comparing my insides to someone else's outside, um, I discussed. I discovered that I was doing that. Someone had to point that out to me. I didn't figure that out, that one out myself. <laughs> but when I was told that and I, and really like internalized that I was comparing my insides to everyone else's outsides. And that is a losing game. <laughs> I will never win at that game. Um, because we all know looks can be deceiving. Right. And we're all on it. And we are all on our own journey. So that, that little piece of information really led me, really helped me in, on, on this journey because then I was like, okay, you know, this, I'm, I'm human. Um, I, I have a friend that, that would al always say, you're perfectly imperfect mm. and the most you will ever get is human. And, I, and that's great. That is great. I'm human and this is my journey. I'm on a human journey. There you have it. And I'm a spiritual being, right? So that that has really helped me over the years. But yeah, I mean, these things did, you know, it took these things to get my attention. Um, so yes, it, uh, uh, the, the drinking, you know, I, there, was a, there was a point I was like, why am I doing this? You know, <laughs> you know I, I'm, I'm literally sick all the time. Why am I doing this? And then I'd go back to doing it, right? Yep. Um, <laughs> you know, or, 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 or we could just talk about fitness, right? I could be, and I have, I have been there, Lois. Like, I was a fitness, I was a fitness addict. Uh, totally. People don't, there's, there's, I, I call them the socially acceptable, uh, addictive behaviors like fitness, working, um, even, even social media, right. Yeah. Um, how many people get stuck into scrolling for hours a day and then they get into the comparison mode. Um, and most people aren't real and raw and authentic and having conversations like this on Facebook. Wow. Uh, you know, it's why I shut down <laughs> my sales coaching side of my business. Cause I was tired of most people were focusing on the success and the money and the sales at, at, at the, you know, at the expense of their own rest of their life, their health, mental, physical, and spiritual. And so that's why I'm having these open discussions because I feel like, you know, addictions are on the rise, mental health, suicide, uh, ever since the pandemic, people, if they're not waking up to the healing side, um, they're going to lean heavily on their addiction. So guys, that's why I wanted to keep bringing this awareness because more and more people are feeling like something's not right. I've got to change. And I'm looking for, you know, uh, help, you know, raising, raising their hand, like you said, with John Bradshaw earlier. So I'm, I'm so grateful for you. I know we're, we're over um, 33 minutes. We still have some viewers on. So this is very exciting. I would like to share um, a couple things and then I'm going to turn over to you for any other closing comments, um, remarks, anything else that you, any golden nuggets that you haven't, haven't shared yet because I will say for me, um, I told people at the end of 2020, I, I hit my proverbial rock bottom and I knew that I was, I, I was not well. And like you, Bill, I thought if I don't change, I'm going to die. <laughs> and when I look at my life and I think of all the things that I've accomplished and, and all the things I've done and all that I have to live for, I was like, it, it just didn't make sense. So I'm so grateful, but it, it took me almost a full two years to really get to those root causes and to really take the time. Cause that was the biggest thing. I wasn't willing to take the time before I knew I had issues, but I wasn't willing to slow down. So that's another quick tip is taking the time to get curious, to slow down and to not do it alone. Um, so I created a 40 day um, busting through addictive behaviors, really finding your better body 40 day challenge. Um, there'll be definitely focus on addictive behaviors. Also weight loss. I'm going to have a nutritional component. I'm so glad you brought that up 
as well, Bill, because we want to nourish and nurture your body, mind, as well as your spirit. We're going to have three meditation classes a week. We're going to be having two um, classes a week where we're getting to the root cause and working through the inner child healing and all that kind of stuff. Kundalini yoga, breath work. I'm pulling out all the stops to help you guys truly take the time. And 40 days, honestly, may or may not be enough, (laughs) but it's going to help you feel better, slow down, really be intentional about that mind, body, spirit, putting um, your oxygen mask on first. Um, so go to the, the, the landing page, 40 hyphen day hyphen challenge dot now dot site. Um, I will be putting more information out about that as well, but I just want to let you guys know how, how much I'm committed to helping bring about this awareness and give you um, a support system. Because I think, you know, you and I can speak to that bill probably for another hour about how your environment and your support system are so critical for your healing and coming back to, to wholeness. So um, is there anything else that you want to share that you haven't yet that you really want the audience to hear today? Well, I think, uh, I think I just kind of like to mirror what you just said about establishing uh, that support system uh, because er- early in my recovery, it was that it was that support system that, you know, I talked about how kind of the universe just kind of put some people in my life, rearrange things for me. Mm. And when that, and I was very aware of it. So I think sometimes, and I'll, I'll close with this, the, the universe literally sets it up so that we can make a change but it kind of gives us a choice hey looky here you can go this way and you and you can do this here's a here's a window of opportunity for Mm -hmm. you to change here you go (laughs) and we can take it or we can leave it there's like a moment of clarity there's a moment of clarity and we can move on it or not and um I had a moment of clarity and there were these people with their hands out and I, I surrendered. Um, I didn't really talk about that much today, but I surrendered and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't control this anymore. This could go for anything. This could go with fitness, um, struggles at work, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. I surrendered and I, and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I can't figure this out. Please help me. And that's when things really took off for me. So, yeah, that was uh, all I wanted to say. And also that um, I'm really, really grateful that you had me on here today. I'm very humbled and and I'm so I'm so happy that I, I couldn't with my setup here. I couldn't see who tuned in, but I'm so happy that so many folks tuned in. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I'm so excited. And uh, I'll probably have you back. Maybe, Bill, I'm putting you on the spot here. No, no pressure. But I may even have you come inside of my 40 day challenge. It starts February 20th, guys. So you've got to get some time. Um, But I may have Bill come back if he's open, uh, just to be able to go even deeper on what you just talked about the surrender. I actually read the book, The Surrender Experiment. And it got my attention. So that was like the fall of 2020. And it was by December that I was like waving my white flag. And literally, like you said, it was almost eerie. I had a spiritual mentor come boom and say, hey, you're here for more than this. It's time for you to shift, to wake up to your truth, to evolve. And literally, he's the one who then suggested I go and do ayahuasca and sit with plant medicine and started my healing path was through microdosing with psilocybin and and plant medicine and working with shamans and real, real deep spiritual community and support. And that was part of what I was missing, right? That that spiritual community, that support system Um, during the pandemic, right? We all felt so isolated and alone. And once I started you know, looking at my environment and, and, and changing who I was working with and changing who I was surrounding myself with and starting to be around people who are healing and going through the same stuff, if you will. Boom. That was when it just all came together for me. So I'm so glad you brought up surrender because that was a huge, huge part 
of of my uh, my own journey as well. Just want to give a shout out to my brother from another mother, Sean Waite. Thanks so much for tuning in today. And again, guys, if you enjoyed this episode of Healthy and Wealthy and Wise, please hit the share button. Especially now, sharing is caring. So many people have given up on their New Year's resolutions, maybe lost hope, maybe struggling with addictive behaviors. Um, feel free to let them know about my upcoming February 20th, um, 40 day challenge. And we just want to wish you guys all the best in your health, your wealth, your relationship, and of course, trusting your own wisdom to know the difference to, to literally help you live your, your best life. So until next time, thanks for tuning in guys. Bye-bye for now. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.